Are you looking for new ways to make some gil in the expensive world of Vanadil? Do you like running around the desert or the jungle for hours on end? Are you a big yellow bird enthusiast? Then chocobo digging might just be the answer you are looking for. What's up guys, my name is Zarbrawl and welcome to my guide to chocobo digging in Final Fantasy XI, very specifically on the Wings XI private server. This is important as digging on the server does not work quite like it does on retail and possibly other servers that are out there, so keep that in mind while you're watching this guide. I personally had never even participated in digging on retail, so this was a completely unexplored territory for me. After seeing many of my Link Shell mates sing the praises of digging in the long run, I decided to give it a fair go, and I'm honestly very happy I did. Yes, digging can be extremely boring, but it's a great way to make a consistent amount of gil, especially if you pair it with some crafts. Just boot up some anime or a movie on your phone or second monitor, and you let the bird slave away while you rack up the coins. Without further ado, let's just jump right into the video. First of all, let's talk about the basics. Digging can be done as soon as you own your own chocobo license, which can be achieved by completing the very simple quest in Upper Geno once you reach level 20. I will link up in the description of the video the wiki for the quest in case you do need it. Once that's done, you are able to start digging. Before you put your new yellow friend to work though, there are a few things we need to discuss. The first one, and I think that's one of the most important one, is the moon phases. Essentially, being closer to 100% full moon or 0% new moon will greatly increase the accuracy of your digs, yielding far better results. For this reason, I recommend avoiding digging completely if the current moon phase is anywhere between 30 to 70%. You can still dig technically and potentially yield some results, but you will spend a lot of time not digging anything, making it not really worth your while in all honesty. The first quarter moon and last quarter moon are the absolute worst trash time overall, so I'd recommend not digging especially during those times. When you get to much higher levels of digging, you will want to shoot for Waxing Crescent Moon for a chance to dig up elemental ores, which are worth quite a lot of gil. This is only possible though when you've reached level 7, Artisan, and that will take you a very very long time, so I'm sure you will be kind of an expert by that point. You start at rank 0, and it takes a lot of digs in order to level up. As for how to dig, well it's really simple. All you need to do is purchase some Geisel Greens or Gisel Greens, however you want to pronounce it. You can then ride a chocobo and use the dig command as long as you're not standing on a rock or something. At rank 0, you will have a 16 second cooldown in between digs. This goes down quite a bit as your rank increases though and will make digging a lot more efficient in the long run. While we're on the topic, let's now cover how the leveling system actually works. Essentially, after every time you dig, you will have a percent chance based on your rank to get a skill up. Unlike crafting and fishing, these skill ups will not appear on your screen, so tracking them is honestly kind of a pain. I will cover a little later how you can check your digging rank without too much difficulty and it will be timestamped in the video. The percent chance to skill up is publicly available on the wonderful website Wangstangs and it goes as follows. Rank 0, you will have 6.25% chance to get a skill up. This goes down to 2.77% for rank 1, all the way down to 0.25% to reach the max level. Using these, we can do an average on the amount of digs you will need in order to get a new level. This is of course an average and can vary a little bit if you're lucky or unlucky, but it will give you a base idea. Rank 1 should take you about 1600 digs. Rank 2 around 3600 digs, rank 3 about 6000 digs, and so on. Again, all of this information is available on the website, and I will leave a link to it in the description of this video. One thing to note, you will not need to get an item while digging in order to get a potential skill up. That means that you can technically dig at any time or any moon, and still skill up your digging, though you will minimize your time and rewards. Now, let's get into the juicy stuff. Where should you be digging in order to get those fat gill stacks? 
Well, there are essentially three main areas you will want to spend your time digging. Western Altepa Desert, Eastern Altepa Desert, and Yuator Jungle. These zones seem to give the best drops for your time, and combining your digs and crafting can also maximize your profits. You can buy the greens for extremely cheap in Rabao by talking to Generalt at G6. Let's go over all the zones and their potential drops, and what you should sell to the auction house versus the drops you'll want to sell to NPCs. Digging in Western Altepa Desert will yield iron, gold, and dark steel ores, and the occasional Philosopher's Stone. These should all be sold in stacks to the auction house. You can also convert the ores if you have smithing or goldsmithing leveled for maximum profits. Sell to NPCs all the bone chips, femurs, coral fragments, and fish scales. You can try and sell the pebbles on the auction house along with the zinc ores, but I find that they're really not worth much, so it's better to just NPC them to save some time and some space. Western Altepa Desert is usually known as the best area to dig if you have smithing leveled. Digging in the Eastern Altepa Desert will yield some silver, mithril, and platinum ores, along with Philosopher's Stones and Wyvern Scales. The scales here drop quite often and go for about 42k-ish a stack at the moment of the release of this guide. This is why Eastern Altepa is considered the best zone to dig in, especially if you don't plan to craft any of the materials and just plan to make some gills selling them. All of those items are very much in demand and sell very quickly too on the auction house. Similar to Western Altepa, vendor all the femurs, bone chips along with the zinc cores you collected, though again you could technically put them on the auction house as well. This is also known as the best zone, especially if you have goldsmithing level to convert all of these ores. Lastly, Yoator Jungle will lead mostly some ebony, mahogany, and petrified logs. This zone is favored by players that have woodworking leveled because they can convert these logs into very valuable lumber for a maximum return. The rest of the items collected here can be simply vendored to NPCs. Avoid the tunnels and focus on outdoor areas to avoid getting the you cannot dig here message. Looks like these tunnels are made of solid rocks and you're not able to dig through them. Another quick note here as it's a question I got many many times in game, the spot you're standing does not actually affect your yield. As long as you're in the zone it's basically lottery based. Sometimes it does feel like you hit like a good spot and get a few good drops back to back, but it's all random. After each dig, make sure to move slightly as you cannot dig back to back in the exact same spot, so just keep moving in between digs. Now the last topic I want to talk about before we put all of this beautiful information in practice is how to check the current digging rank. As mentioned earlier, there's no text prompts or anything really indicating your digging rank from the menus or even by talking to NPCs. The only way to check is by timing the time it takes in order to be able to dig after you go into a zone. Each rank has a different cooldown upon zoning on which you can start digging. It starts at 60 seconds at rank 0 and lowers by 5 seconds for every level you have digging. This means you can set up a macro to go off as you zone and wait for a timer to double check your rank. If you put a timer for 55 seconds and it says digging is unavailable, then your rank is still 0. The cooldown in between digs can also indicate your rank at earlier levels, but since it's become 0 at rank 3, this won't work for the later levels. You can also set up a macro in order to dig multiple times by adding a wait timer at the end of your macro. For example, at rank 0, I would do dig and wait 17 and copy paste it on all the lines. I would sometimes try another macro that I prepared in advance with wait 12 to see if I did get a level up until I actually did. I add a second to the wait timer shown on the Wangstang's website as sometimes with the animations it can be a little bit janky if you put the actual timer. Now I know this is a lot of information and how do we put all of this in practice? Well, first thing I recommend is setting your home point in Rabo, especially if you plan to dig in the desert. You can simply use the book right outside to work back to your home nation when needed, and being able to get back in Rabao quickly to sell your items and purchase more greens is extremely useful. Now, make sure you do have as much free inventory as possible. You can purchase the chokeable riding gear, which will make it so you can ride longer without stopping, 
but it's really not a deal breaker. This doesn't actually increase the items or the yields you get while digging, simply a longer ride on the bird. Speaking of the bird, the rental dudette in Rabao is quite unaware of the value of her birds and rents them for dirt cheap, so you can always warp back and just get a new one. If you do have warp available, make sure you either sub black mage or go black mage, as warping when your greens are done, if the bird expires, will save you some time. Next, make your way to the vendor and buy all the stacks of greens that you can. I usually leave about 6 or 7 free slots in my inventory for the drops I will be getting while digging. I then recommend setting up your macros as shown earlier, depending on your rank. Next, rent a bird and head to your preferred zone. As mentioned, I do think Eastern Altepa is the superior zone, but Western Altepa is very acceptable, especially if you get lucky on the Darksteel ores. Next, put on that anime we talked about, or put a new season of your favorite show, and dig dig dig! There is no shortcut, it takes a very long time to level up your digging rank, and it just plain sucks at early levels. Keep at it, and I promise the results down the road are worth it. Your digging cooldown will drop from 16 seconds to 11 seconds, then down to 6 seconds, and finally 0 seconds at rank 3. This is where digging starts to be really, really good as you're able to dig back to back and usually clear off a full inventory of greens even before your rental slave drops out of exhaustion. Warp back and repeat to your heart's content. If you do have a lot of stacks of green left after your chocobo is gone, you can also grab a new one at the Altep Crystal in Eastern Altepa, though it is a little bit more expensive. Unlike on retail, there is no digging fatigue here on the server, so you can literally dig 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 as much as you need or want. Well, that's it for my quick guide on digging on the private server Wings XI. Just a little recap, digging is very, very boring and very time consuming. Unlike fishing where you see profits right away, digging will take some time to get your guild balance rolling. Having to move every few seconds is also kind of annoying when you're trying to multitask versus fishing, so it definitely has its pros and cons. One thing is for sure though, in the long run, digging is probably one of the best ways, if not the best way to make a consistent income, especially if you don't have your thief leveled. If you feel like I've missed anything in this video, don't be shy to add it down below in the comments for the rest of us to see. If you enjoyed the video, if this was helpful to you in any way, shape, or form, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more Final Fantasy XI content coming in the near future. Thanks a lot for watching and happy digging.